G'day, I'm Ash. Welcome yourselves back to War Thunder, and it's in today's episode we're going to be taking a look at the D521. This is a French aircraft, but not just any French aircraft. It was one of two French aircraft that were available in the British tech tree back before France was even available. This machine is one of the very early, early uh, rank gift British aircraft it also happens to be French, that was implemented back in, I think it was 2013. Anyhow, this vehicle is so old, it also is the first aircraft to have a high definition cockpit, and that was proudly displayed in 2013 as well as a part of an event you could get a couple of aircraft, get a couple of kills, and so on and so forth. So yeah, this thing is ancient, and really is a relic of times bygone, because this aircraft is utterly horrible. But if you want to see me take out older vehicles, be sure to smash that subscribe button. Anyhow, it's got a 8mm plate and then a radio plate, uh, sort of like a 3mm armour plate, I presume that's with a radio antenna on the back, and then there's obviously a 38mm uh, sort of on the front. The engine is a Rolls-Royce Merlin 3, and then it's got fuel tanks self-sealing, although you'll get caught on fire pretty easily. It does have wing fuel tanks, and then it has the weakest armament in-game, that being of the 7.5mm machine guns. So it does have uh, the weakest armament in game in terms of machine guns, and it only has a 60 round 20 millimeter cannon straight through the nose of the propeller. So it's not great. It really is a horrible aircraft to fly in practice. It's slow, it's cumbersome, it's not maneuverable. The wing fuel tanks get caught on fire quite often. And there is another version of the same aircraft in the British tech tree that you could buy as a premium, but is no longer there. So it just really is a horrible aircraft altogether. What I mean is it doesn't excel at anything particularly well, and considering the way that players play nowadays, and comparatively to when this thing was first introduced, back then you could actually kind of get a use out of the stealth rounds and the traces on this machine. Nowadays, good luck ever engaging more than one target, because if you see an I-16, you're done. If you see a P-63, you're probably most likely dead. If you see a CW-21, good luck. And don't get me started on some of the Swedish aircraft as well. This thing really, really suffers from overheating issues, and just generally after you perform a first dive on an aircraft and lose a little bit of altitude, there is no way that you can gain altitude quickly enough to really sort of, you know, make an impact on the battle. So really, I've tried playing this in a variety of roles, close air support, uh, boom and zoom, I've tried playing it as a, well, climbing off the side of the map like an ME163 or a 262, none of the play styles really work for this thing. Case in point, when there is massive terrain, I've done one turn this far, this far uh, dive down over the mountaintops to try and get this RE2000. We've had one pass together, managed to rip his tail off. Great, that's the first kill, and you see the immediate problem. Kaya 43, very, very maneuverable aircraft. I-16, very, very maneuverable aircraft. I'm just watching my terrain to figure out where I am. You can see where this is going, can't you? There's a P-40. P-40s are very versatile, have a lot of rigidity to them. Trying to get over this terrain on this new bourbon sort of island, or whatever the fuck it's called, is really a bit of a pain. And you can see I'm not really gaining speed, but those guys do know of my existence. So I'm just trying to keep out of the way. Alright, here they come. One's going to come in for a pass on me. Try and pull back down and then over again. Mind you, I've lost a lot of speed here. We'll go straight into the dive. I-16 is hot on my tail. There's not really much I can do here. This is the limit of the maneuverability. You can't pull away. The flaps rip off too easily. And despite the hardest maneuvers here, even 2v1ing, even 3v1ing, uh, it just isn't possible to outmaneuver anything here. And that goes the same with for any really heavy aircraft, but this is exceptionally heavy. Fire goes out, I manage to pull up, I've got limited control. You can see I can't really do much against one aircraft. Like, fair enough, these are all very maneuverable aircraft that I'm facing. As you can see, I'm trying to avoid this I-16's guns as much as possible. Car 43 nearly collides. In fact, does collide with me. And this is where my engine goes kaput. And had the I-16 gone on that current trajectory, it would have shot him, but... Suffice to say that this aircraft is a piece of junk. A collectible piece of junk, because it's one of the rarest vehicles in War Thunder. <laughs> but still. 
Going into the next match, I'm chasing down an A36. We get a hit when all of a sudden my radar goes off. Funny how sp uh, pilot spotting works. Didn't hear him until later. Managed to set him on fire with one of the 20mm shells. Doesn't matter. We're coming in for the A36 again. You can sort of see it's relatively low speed and low handling performance is quite interesting. And that's when the wing tank gets set on fire here. But the Corsair, because he has self-sealing field tanks, manages to put out the fire. Me, on the other hand, I can only get the kill on this A36, but I can't put the fuel out. Yes, I have a hell on my left wing. Right, third match. You'd think I'd be able to get an ace by now, considering I know all the quirks of this machine. Well, not exactly. Trying to keep low and keep my speed as much as possible because, yeah, this thing does have combat flaps, it does have takeoff and landing. It doesn't have air brakes or a rest of gear. The elevator's optimal velocities are about 430 minus uh, sort of speed. So, really, this aircraft performs well at about 300 kilometers an hour. Anything lower, too sluggish. Anything higher, it locks up. And coming in to support the S199, this Kai 96 is something that is rather superior. Honestly, I don't know why he was trying to turn fight in that regard here, but I will catch him on fire and I will kill him. Because this thing's sort of armor piercing with the 20mm is actually effective. But not so effective that we now have to spend the next 25 minutes chasing a P-39 and a B-34 across the whole entire map. This was a 25 minute match. And again, I'm the last player left because one of the S-199s decided to crash on the runway. Anyhow, can you spot what's going to happen here? This is a classic textbook don't do. Hmm. Hold my right wing. Completely damaged engine. Uh, managed to kill him, but he also got me. Let's see if we can make it back to the airfield. As it sounds like uh, chipmunks, Elvin and the chipmunks uh, in War Thunder here. Pulling down, trying to manage our way through. Managing to actually maintain some form of flight, can I make it on the runway and land? The answer is no. And that brings us to the full match. So, now you've had a little bit of a taste of what this aircraft is. It plays really heavily, it's quite cumbersome, the airframe isn't exactly the best at taking damage, it catches fire quite easily, the engine overheats like nobody's business. The all-round package for this machine is quite terrible. And yet, on the description for the Wikipedia page about this particular aircraft, it says, <clears throat> and I quote, By applying situational awareness and a degree of caution to your approach, you may find yourself to be quite successful with this machine. What a load of fucking trollop if I've ever heard anything from, from Gaussian Entertainment. And trust me, I've heard a lot of bullshit from Gaussian Entertainment in my time. It's just surprising that they really... Uh, 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 situational awareness, really. For something that is battle rating 3.0 and faces mixed teams. That, that might have mattered. Situational awareness might have mattered in 2014. But in 2022... Your first thing stuff like Stukas, Fuck Wolf 190s, Zeros, Corsairs, CW21s, Premium Aircraft, Event Aircraft, I-16s. There's no consistent teams. It's not like you're versing Germany and Germany alone. You're fighting everything and the turn fighting everything, right? It would have mattered if, if there wasn't mixed matchmaker, but unfortunately that's not the case. In most of my matches, you find yourself up against a target that is, well either a defensive fighter or a heavy fighter or whatever you, you try and apply tactics some arsehole will come swooping in because he's a turn fighter and can dive at 600 kilometers an hour and completely wipe you off the face of the earth so no girls and entertainment's full of, full of shit like normal so you know just take that as a grain of salt tried to come in on a pass with this f6f-5 and we end up by bleeding on our speed but this is a good point for us to get a kill and he is gone, and we're going to pull back down, maintain our speed, and pull out towards that P-63 on that direction. Because our whole entire friendly team decided to dive after one target, we were sort of left with no other option other than to stay at the deck. Fortunately for us, however, this actually works in our favour, because it combines the goodness of the Corsairs over there, and the P-51s, and they can actually go do their more effective fighter job, because... Honestly, this thing is pointless. And only doing 400 kilometers right now with a slight climb, 
trying to go after targets isn't exactly easy. Now initially I was going to go after that Fog Wolf and I was just double checking which direction he was heading. He was heading back to his base. The A6M2 gets absolutely destroyed. P51C, uh, the, the Japanese one, tries to go after the AI-110s. Uh, Good for him. I guess you're getting some bonus points. And I have spotted a Stuka. Now, I'm licking my lips because a Stuka is a juicy target. Now, it is a D5, and I don't know it just yet, but he will try to, to do his thing, but won't necessarily. Two Corsairs and P51 against a P51 and an LA5, as well as another two Corsairs. You see why mixed teams is a bit of a problem when you're flying something that is basically a flying brick? Now, I'm not going to say anything against French aircraft. I quite like some of the French aircraft, but this one in particular, I hate it with all my guts. Anyway, approaching the Stuka, we're going to dive a little bit to get out of his gun range. I don't really want to get hit by those MG-151s or, or, well, anything really. I presume he's running cannons. Yeah, there it is, the Stuka D. Now, his machine guns, ooh, yeah, he's got cannons on, doesn't he? Anyway, ooh, careful about his rear gunner. Let's spray and pray him just a little bit, and now we pull away. Yep, yep, not going to get hit by those machine guns. So, second kill of the match. Do you think we can get five kills? The answer is no. We just don't have enough ammunition. Look, I've got five cannon rounds left. After doing that small little burst, yeah, a bit trigger happy I am. And now there's a P-51 and a Corsair. All of a sudden, there's a friendly I-16 in front of me. I have a feeling he was coming after that Stuka that I was going after. The AA randomly puts a shell towards me, and then we just pull up and uh, keep going. Corsair is getting engaged by another Corsair, funny enough. And we're just going to spray and pray and sort of hopefully get a hit. Gun targeting distance is set to 600. I'm not used to using that kind of convergence. For some reason, uh, Gaussian decided to reset my convergence when I restarted the game today. So again, I just forgot to set it in the battle because I just wanted to get footage. Situational awareness, they said. Well, here's a bit of situational awareness. Not flying towards their airfield is a good situational awareness. Now, I wish there was a big marker on the map that actually told you where the enemy base was. There used to be. Um, now you just have to look for anti-air. Ah, uh, you know, you can't have useful UI features now, can you? Alright, P-51 C-10 tries to go for a little bit of a smack. He's not going to make it, though. Because he's got half the enemy team. Of which consists of me as well. Good shot by the Corsair, obliterates him, and then there is one final F for you left. This is the last guy, and I don't know it, but it is what it is. And this machine is just a struggle bus not climbing particularly well, it's overheating. Machine guns are utterly piss poor. You know, you, I, I would rather be flying a Hurricane or some other machine rather than this one. Initially, the idea was for me just to play a low tier vehicle that would be fun. I haven't played this vehicle since 2014. There is a video on channel if you want to have a look at it, I don't recommend it. But at least it's some fun with some mates. Uh, cringy commentary and then very terrible balanced audio. I guess that really hasn't changed in my channel anyway. Still, point remains, this thing is garbage. And when you've got friendlies also shooting at the last remaining aircraft, as that fuck wolf got absolutely demolished by LA-5, yeah, there's probably no way you're actually going to get a kill. And instead, you'll just get a kill assist because machine guns don't do any damage. This is the D-521. A rare event vehicle that is practically useless. I'm Ash, thank you very much for watching today's video, I hope you have a good one.